Okay, so now we're gonna open up the cam software. This is Sheet Cam and it'll be on your desktop. So go ahead and double click it. Once the software opens, the first thing that I like to do is hit File and then New Part. It's asked me if I wanna import a drawing. Go ahead and hit Yes. I find the bracket that we had just designed and click Open. In this window here, I'm gonna keep it in inches for the scaling and for the drawing position, I'm gonna keep the origin in the bottom left corner. I'm gonna click OK, and now we can see the bracket that we designed inside of the grid. So the red lines for this bracket means that this part has a closed contour for its exterior feature. And this is a good thing, meaning that the rectangle is closed and that the cut will complete. The yellow lines are for interior features, and those also indicate close contours. If I had a white line in this part, or any of these lines were white, it would mean that those are not closed contours, and they would not completely cut out of the material. So before we go into some of the deeper functions, I think it's important to remember that your system will come with all of the configurations preset so that you will be able to cut apart. We will show you some of the configurations that you may want to change here and there over time or based on the particular project that you're working on. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to options and I'm going to go to job options. And right here, I'm going to actually punch in the size of the workpiece that I'm working on. So if I measure the width of my workpiece to be 25 inches and I measure the length of my workpiece to be 30 inches and I go ahead and click OK, you can see this maroon box change sizes. Now, this is important because if we're going to nest this part or array this part, I might want to know how many of these brackets I can make out of one sheet. So now that I have measured my workpiece and I have put the workpiece size in to this, to this um, software, I can then go and I can nest the part. So I'm going to come up here to the nesting tool. I'm going to click on my part. My part is all white. Now if I right click and hit array parts, I can do columns and rows. So for this instance, I'm just gonna say five and five, we'll keep it on what it's already at. The part spacing, this is 150 thousandths of an inch in between parts. You might wanna go to a quarter inch in between parts, uh, just depending on what you're working on. And I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And we can see that I have made one extra row than what's needed and it and it actually goes off of the workpiece so i can't fit that so what i can do is highlight those and delete them and now i know that i can make this many brackets if i were to turn one of these brackets sideways which is picking the nesting tool bringing this up and then using the arrow keys to bring it over and then using the left and right carrot to, to rotate, I can place more brackets up top in this area. And again, I can right click and array parts. This time I'm only going to do uh, one row and five columns, which gave me three extra parts up top. These two didn't quite make it onto the sheet, so I'll just highlight them and delete them. So at this point, I know how many brackets I can probably make out of this sheet of material. I can visualize this before I go turn this into G-code and run it in the CNC interface. This gray tile here, the larger tile that's in view, is actually the machine envelope. So you can go into Options and you can click Machine and you can click working envelope. This is gonna come preset uh, for your machine. So there really is no need to change this. Um, however, if you did wanna change your machine envelope or the working space 
that's available with your machine, this is where you do it. Uh, I will point out there is a post processor tab here. The post processor is what turns your design or your cam layout into G code. And that G code is then what is run by the machine to cut these parts out. There's no need to change the post processor. Uh, this post processor is specifically for our tables. Um, but this is where you would load a new post processor or something like that if there was the ultra rare occurrence that you needed to do something like that. So we'll just keep moving along here. Uh, under the tools tab, you can see cutting rules. Once you click on that, and you can see the cutting rules that are already in this program. These come preloaded from us, they always will. Um, and these are going to be the best path rules that you can use for 99% of your parts. There may be a part here and there that you wanna add a rule or take one of these rules off um, once you get a deeper understanding of how to use the equipment. And then in that case, you can go ahead and make changes here. And then you can go ahead and click OK to make sure that those rules are applied to this nest. Uh, other features on here, or something maybe to talk about would be this tools uh, toolbar. So these are the tools that we have preloaded. In this case, these are hypertherm tools. And you pick a tool based on the amperage, the material thickness, and the material type. Um, and we will use this when we're creating an operation. However, you can see all your tools here um, to know what tool set you have loaded. Furthermore, at this point, you're probably fine to go ahead and click operation and hit plasma cut. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna set up the path, this is gonna apply the path rules to your part so that when you post process your part and create G code, the CNC interface can understand the direction and the order of the features to cut. So the first thing you'll see is contour method. There's outside offset. Outside offset is an offset that will, for, for perimeter features, it will cut on the outside, but for interior features, it will cut on the inside of those features. And this is important because it will keep the bracket that we designed, none of the lead-ins or lead-outs will be inside the part of the bracket. They will all be in the cutouts of the holes or outside of the envelope of the bracket. Layer, um, when you design a part in CAD, a layer will automatically be, the, your CAD program is going to put that part onto a layer. And so there you, you will usually only be one option here. In this case, it is zero um, for the QCAD part that we designed. However, if you could have multiple layers, if you wanted to group features on one layer and other features on another layer, or if you wanted to run engraving, so engraving would be on a different layer than the actual plasma cutting operation. So it's important when you're creating this operation to choose the layer that you want, however, in most cases, there's only gonna be one option. So go ahead and select that. For tool, we are going to be cutting this out of 16 gauge steel with a 45 amp uh, torch consumable stack. So we come over here, T4, 45 amp, 16 gauge steel. Go ahead and click that. Feed rate and all this are automatically going to be filled in based on the tool that you choose. Down here in path rules, we're gonna make sure standard is selected so that it will apply the standard path rules. If you select none, it will apply none of the path rules that we had just uh, talked about in the previous screen. For lead-in, we're gonna choose arc, which works for most lead-ins uh, most of the time. And then length, we're gonna, of the lead-in, it's gonna be 150 thousandths of an inch, and we're not going to apply a lead-out. So at this point, we can go ahead and click OK, and we will see down in the operations toolbar that we now have an operation. 
And if you ever want to change anything in there, you can double click it and access the parameters that you'd set. So at this point, I'm gonna zoom in and show you what we've done. All right, so for interior features, you can see that the lead in is inside of the circle due to that outside offset. And you can see that the lead in for the perimeter feature is on the outside of the bracket. And that's also because of the outside offset that was chosen. So our bracket will remain dimensionally true to our design as best as possible. So anywhere where you can see a green line, there is no path rule applied, but anywhere there is a blue line, there is a path rule applied. In this case, we have a path rule for small circles. So torch height control will be turned off for small circles, and that is dictated by our path rules. And then on corners, 90 degrees or less, we have a path rule as well to slow down the feed rate just a tad and make sure that we're not applying torch height control on that corner. So the arrows that you see here on these lines, these arrows dictate the cutting direction of the torch or end of the machine movement. So these parts will be cut out clockwise and these interior features will be cut out counterclockwise. This is very important because there is a directionality to plasma cutting based on the way that the uh, gas comes out of the nozzle and through the swirl ring. This is something that'll be pre-configured. Um, so you do not have to worry, worry about that much. Um, and finally, we have our nest, we have our operation made, we have our tool chosen, we have nested our part. At this point, what is left to do is go ahead and run the post processor. So we're gonna go up to file, run post processor. We'll save it. This is gonna be an NGC file. I'll call it bracket1.ngc. I'll hit save. And then the last option that I have to change is the blend value. So blend value is basically blending tight angles into more of a radius. And the reason that you wanna do that and the reason that it's beneficial is because the best possible cut you can get on a plasma machine is when you maintain a constant feed rate. So if you're trying to go to a point, you have to decelerate to stop at that point and then accelerate to get back away from that point. Well, a blend value will blend that point into more of a radius. That way you can maintain a higher feed rate rather than extreme deceleration and acceleration back out of that point. So we have a preset value in here. This is the best value that you can use for most of your parts. If you're doing detailed artwork or something like that and you, you become nuanced at how this feature works, this may be something to mess with, uh, but for most cuts, this is a value that seems to work great for all sorts of angles and shapes. So go ahead and click OK. It's gonna run the post processor. I'm gonna hit OK. And now I have saved this nest. I can minimize this screen. And now we're ready to open up the user interface and run the CNC machine. That's all for the sheet cam uh, video, but we will have more videos. Please check the website. Um, we have other tutorials as well, things that might shed some light on some of these features a little bit deeper, but thank you very much.